permit? No, it was a part. No, he was actually <coughs> the park was part. Still, still need using for other. Still be using for other places, but yeah, maybe a little bit narrower. Yeah. But yes, this this pad will come down. If you look at the 142, that drop the size of that pad just for a, a ten by or the width of it, which is probably ten or twelve feet wide. Steve, Mr. Backus, um, the current parking area is on the dirt to the to the left of the screen. Is that correct? There is some parking there, mate. <laughs> Mainly, this is a lot of the parking in this area for the trailers and bringing the horses in. I'm talking about for the public. Yeah, parking in this area. I'm talking about for the public. I, I parked over here over to the this. left. Everything to the west, basically, of the arena all the way out to Mill Street, we use for parking to the public, okay. as well as down here on this uh, east corner. Uh, we actually also have, uh, every year we talk to the, uh, the lumber company that's across the creek, and they let us, as long as we mow this field for them, which we do every year, uh, we use that for our contestant parking, so they park all their horse trailers, and okay, so they don't interact with the public. All the public parking is on this side of the field. I'm just thinking if we're going to invest in this, you know, we're going to get to paving the lot to the left, to the west, towards Mill Street, on top of that. When I get them a car, it's always been nice, it's not been raining. But I know these guys go out there, whether it rains or shines, is that right? <laughs> we try not to. <laughs> but, uh, you, know, you know, when they have an event going on, if it rains, I know that. The rodeo would go on rain or shine. Yes, right. Does he make any other questions for staff? Right, quick. Does he make any other questions for staff? Yes, for staff. Not for staff. No. Okay. Before we go any further, we did have some people fill out cards here. We have Marlene Neff uh, from Highland Village. Uh, she's in the Marcus High School rodeo team. Uh, Diana Johnson from Crum. Members of the Saddle Club. Sorry. Uh, we have Michael Wheeler from Crum, who's a member of the Saddle, uh, president of the Saddle Club. And then we have Gene Montgomery uh, from Sanger, who is a founding member of the Saddle Club, or founding member of the Rodeo of the Saddle Club. And then we have Kathleen Colley, uh, who is also a member of the Saddle Club. So you high school rodeo team. Which high school rodeo team are you on? At Marcus. Marcus. Okay, uh, I know you want to speak early, if you would, just for our interest, I mean, for our sake of time, the same time, instead of all of you speaking, I'd like to ask one of you to speak and, and say that. This is time for our citizens here. And if you would, we'd like to have you one of you speak, and let's be the consensus of the group, and then go ahead with that. I've actually had discussion quite a bit. I, I would like to you know that Caroline, she's actually uh, over a Good population of children that sure. uses. That's why I said if I could just get one of you speak, that'd be great. I really wanted you to let two people speak uh, Mike for the Louisville Saddle Club and myself for the high school rodeo team. Uh, Wait, high school rodeo? We're one team. We're Marcus, Louisville, and Flower Mound High School, and we're one rodeo team. I see, okay. So we bring all three schools together, unlike the football teams and the basketball teams, our kids are all together. Uh, my name is Arlene Neff. I am the sponsor of the Louisville Marcus Fire Mountain High School Rodeo Team. Um, we're one team. We rodeo together. And one thing I wanted to bring up is only we may not have any members of the Louisville Saddle Club. I'm also a member of the Louisville Saddle Club. We may not have any members of the Louisville Saddle Club that are, live in Louisville, but we have plenty of riders that show up regularly that are from Louisville. They've just chosen for some reason not to join as a member, but they are weekly or monthly riders with us. And I do use Railroad Park, and no, I do not live in Louisville. I live in Highland Village. And I use a lot of things in Louisville, including the Louisville uh, Saddle Club Arena. Um, and if you want to know of other things you can do at the arena, you can do barrel racers there. My daughter's a barrel racer. Um, we go all over the Metroplex for barrel racers. It'd be great to have one in our own backyard. The arena's perfect for it. Um, I'm not a public speaker, I'm a stay-at-home mom, so bear with me. Um, the rodeo team is not a UIL-sponsored event at the school. It is not funded by LISD. 
Our kids work together, they raise money, and they run our team. Um, um, we compete weekly in Saginaw. We are in the yearbook at the schools. We do the homecoming parades. We give scholarships to our seniors. And at the end of the year, we have a banquet that we give out awards to members that qualify. We, we, we meet every week at the Lewisville Saddle Club. We also practice every week at the Lewisville Saddle Club. We also do work days out there. We ask them what they need, and we try to get the kids to do some work so that they can earn their right to use that facility. Without the Lewisville Saddle Club, there would be no high school rodeo teams. The teams will fold. That would be very sad. We provide a special niche, and I may cry because I have a senior, <laughs> and so this is my last year. Um, we provide a special niche for high school seniors, that for high school students that go to very large high schools. If you've been in our high schools, they're very large. All those kids need to find a niche. The rodeo team provides that for some of the kids. We have about 30 members um, from all, the, all different high schools. And we have one of our Louisville members here that goes to Louisville High School that lives in Louisville. And that is out there every week. Um, our members are very different. They come from all different income levels. Very high, very low. They come from the Believe It to Beaver family. They come from very dysfunctional families. Some of the kids are very popular and have lots of friends. Some of the kids barely have any friends. Some of the kids are very successful academically. Other kids have to work very hard for their grades that are on our rodeo team. Some of the kids come from horse backgrounds. Some of the kids have never been around horses till now. We have riders on our team and we have non-riders on our team. These three different schools come together with very different kids. They're friends, they support each other, they're there for each other. It's a great environment. Um, unlike, like I said, at the sporting events where they're against each other, here they're for each other, helping each other. They learn to appreciate the differences in people. They learn to work together and they become friends. Um, you can talk to the principals at all three of these high schools. We, have, we, put, we provide a place for kids that might have dropped out of school if it wasn't for the rodeo team, that might not have kept their grades up as high because we do check grades and they cannot compete with us without good grades. They work to keep their grades up so they can compete with us. We provide positive role models. We provide a niche for kids to feel a part of something, to be accepted and to be happy. Okay, the other, there's three reasons I'm speaking. One, we need the saddle club for the high schools. The other reason is for the Lewisville Saddle Club. My daughter rides at the Louisville Saddle Club, and she has for the past five years. We are not a farm and ranch background family. This is something my daughter came up with in first grade, that she wanted to ride horses. I was ter <coughs> terrified of horses. Finally, it was very hard to find a place for western riding in, in, in this area. And that's, <coughs> this is Texas, and it's hard to find western riding. Don't take our saddle club away. She started riding finally in the second grade. And it has become her passion. She stopped playing softball. She stopped playing basketball so that she can concentrate on her ride. She spent a lot of time at the Louisville Saddle Club Arena. Between the high school rodeo team, between the play days she's competed in, between the Labor Day rodeo she's rode in and volunteered to join in, and the work days she's put in. It's been a wonderful influence in her life. And what other place do you see teenagers hanging out with 80-year-olds? <laughs> and 60-year-olds and 50-year-old adults, and she's enjoying her time, she's learning from them, she's listening to them, and, and she wants to be there with them. The arena's provided a safe, fun, and productive place for her, for her teen years. She's a great kid. She's in the top 10% of her class. She's headed off to A&M this summer. I want the arena there when she comes home. And I want other teenagers to have the great experience that she has had there. And last, leave it surely not the least, when we come to the arena for the Louisville Saddle Club, for the high school kids, we may not be from Louisville, but we come and we do spend money here. We spend money at the Sonic, at the Subway, at the barbecue places, on a lot of gas and diesel, and at Johnson's Feed Store. Because um, on the nights that we meet, I have a lot of parents that come, I have members that come, and we have a big group that come on play days. We don't have the arena, the high school rodeo teams will fail. 
much. They will fold, I promise you. If we don't have the arena, the play dates will continue. They will continue in a different town. We'll be traveling to Denton and spending our money there. We want a rodeo in Louisville. And I just want to point out that your high school in Louisville is called the Fighting Farmers. Keep the farm in Louisville. Thank you very much. And I don't think anybody here wants to go away to the Louisville Saddle Club. The problem is, we, or the situation is, is not a problem. The, the challenge we have is, we have a certain budget that we collect taxes for. Just like the city where you live, Highland Village, uh, Crumb, uh, Flower Mound, all these cities, they have a budget they live in that you pay taxes. For some reason, the cities that you live in have chosen not to have a venue for your Saddle Club. But that's not what we have to look at today is we have to look at do we want, not necessarily like as, as Mr. King put it, we have to separate from are we doing this as you can't look at it as you doing this for the people here in Louisville because that's not the mandate really. The mandate is that we want to provide a, an event arena to host, host this event. And if not, like you said, then the saddle club could still say Bible and just go to another venue. But what, what, that's what we're saying we've got to do. It's not that we want to get rid of the saddle club in any way, shape, or form. We love the saddle club. The thing is, we've got to decide today is do we want, how do we want to spend our tax dollars? Do we want to spend our tax dollars in providing an arena, an event arena that would host these type of events? And that's, that's what we're here looking at. It's nothing to do really with the saddle club other than that you've been using this facility for many years. Well, we've had other things that go by through the wayside. For example, Louisville High School has been there since, well, it was the only high school in, in the LISD at first. And then they're, in fact, remodeling that whole high school, tearing the whole high school down, building a whole brand new high school. But sometimes you have to do those things to move forward. You can't still do the same things you did 100 years ago. And I know you're not 100 years old, so I'm not going to make points. You're not even making points. You're not even making Anyway, so just want to address that, that to you. Then we'll now open it back up to any questions you have to be anybody you want to ask. I, I don't know if I have questions, but I, I do have a couple of statements briefly, if you don't mind, Mayor. Sure. Um, the reason I, I brought this up, I feel kind of strongly about it. Um, I'm glad we have to be able to review it on the agenda. Quite frankly, if I had my brothers, we'd double down and we'd build a covered arena. I think, there's a, I think that there is a market for the space. And, and we really want to come down, you weren't break it down, we spent $12 million to provide a venue, not just for citizens of Louisville. We, we created Railroad Park to provide a venue that would attract tourist dollars. Now, I'd like to speak to that because I've grown up around uh, rodeo folk all my life. You know, I'm pushing 40 now. Um, and I see these beautiful gooseneck trailers. Yeah, I know a couple of you are just laughing about that, right? I see these beautiful trailers. You know, they've got the, the slant sixes, and they've got the lovely living quarters, and they got refrigerators in them now. And I have never, ever, ever seen somebody at a rodeo actually make their own lunch or use that little refrigerator for anything other than leftovers at a restaurant. And it, they spend money. In fact, I have never seen horse people keep money. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> so, so, I mean, yeah, it's anecdotal, but I, it, it's the truth. The horse people, they, they're, they're free with their cash. They eat out. They bring a lot to the table. Um, when you look around, there's no real facilities. You go, to a, you go to a big facility like the Will Rogers. You go to a big facility like the uh, Resist All Arena. Um, you don't have a really nice boutique type of facility um, that we could provide. Much like Railroad Park is a nice boutique type of facility. I'd love to see if we could move it. I thought uh, Councilman Garina had an interesting, he just threw this off, but he had an interesting idea. Put it down by Railroad Park. Yep. Uh, and maybe that takes some, some creativity and some, some longer, longer time frames, but I think that Louisville has an opportunity here um, to play on our heritage, quite frankly. Um, you know, we talked about do we want a venue for these types of events? Is, is, is Louisville a farming and ranching community, or are we past that? And really, that's the question. I don't think we're past it. I think it's a core piece of who we are, and that's, that's, I'd like to see us actually explore. And I don't know if I'll get any backing for that. Um, as far as seating and, and the agenda items that are here, um, you, you don't do a rodeo with low bleachers. You just yeah. don't. 
Um, so I would, I would, uh, I would not be in favor of looking at anything other than the, the, the higher rise bleachers because you just don't get the experience if you're sitting. And I've been to the railroad park bleachers; they're fine for soccer or those types of things. But if you can't sit up and see, you just you lose the effect. So um, I'm with Councilman Durham as well. Um, you know, we need to we need to look at providing that space. I mean, there are there are dog shows that we can tap into. There's livestock. There's at that bay. Uh, there there are a ton of events that if we had just a, a, a facility that was nice and was well marketed, I think we'd have a great opportunity here in Louisville. It would bring in money and it would provide for a better quality of life. Yeah. Um, do we have the room over at Railroad Park to move this little venue over there? Uh, or I need more parking over there too. It's questionable. The uh, <coughs> remaining area that's left over there is really more of the uh, animal control facility that's being built. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want to really move it out of the old town area. I mean, there is some history over here. It would be nice to have it over there to make a make you know make a flex of an event area. But if we move that out of this area, it's another thing that we're moving out that actually draws people to old town. I mean, you know, I, 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 if we're going to fund this, I, I would not like to see this come out of the general fund. I'd like to see this come out of the funds that are granted for four B or hotel hotel because it is a park. Yeah, I didn't really look at 4B, uh, but you're right. I think to make an argument in the heavy project, it would be relatively low cost for 4B. I'd also like to see, uh, I, know it's an, I know you didn't even talk about it, Mr. Backus, but having some actual you know, asphalt or concrete parking off to the west of the arena. I, just, I mean, it's all dirt, it's great, but I just think that something with actual good parking space would probably fit probably fit a lot more cars over there uh, without removing the trees that are there now. Uh, there's some nice big trees in the area. Don't want to do that. Anyway, uh, I'm done with that. I, I'm going for it. I just want to see the money come from sources that are meant to be spent on these type of venues. And I know Mr. Ferguson. Yeah. Um, it's loud. Uh, I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, I wish there were the space over by Railroad Park. I'm not convinced there is. But um, well, before you, you mention Railroad Park, and so I address that we do control some additional acres to the south, even Parkway, that would be a better location. Or it's a bigger location. Well, I'll put it that way for a bigger, broader facility at this time. That DJ was describing. Then we don't have any use allocated for that property then that might be one option. Um, I guess my thought is, on the one hand, we're kind of got our backs to the wall as far as the time frame to decide which direction we're going to go here, and that puts the saddle club in a bit of a bind. But um, at the same time, I mean, we've got to focus on what's uh, long-term in our best interest. Um, I have to wonder if, you know, spending this amount of money on the existing facility, uh, what are we getting back out of that facility? Is that and I hate to move it out of Old Town, too. I kind of need to see it leave Old Town. But I, I'm not sure a, a warming over of this site is the answer. I don't know that I'm, I'm convinced that that's uh, the best way to spend the money, uh, that that's going to create a facility that we can attract other uh, you know, venues to, to come and participate or other um, you know, activities to come and participate. Um, there's also kind of a, an interest in having uh, perhaps a covered facility because that would greatly expand what that facility could be used for. Obviously, that's more money. Um, but if it means the facility gets more use, then there's a return on investment. So, and that's what kind of the thought that keeps coming back to my mind is um, what's the return on this investment and how can we maximize that? And even if it means spending more money, if there's a better return, then that's not money for spent, that's money wisely spent. Well, the thing with that, I mean, probably you're talking about two, three year project minimum. Yeah. You've got, to, you got to have surveys, you've got to land done, you've got to have, I mean, we're, we're talking multi year project there. I, mean, I don't think they can wait multi year. Uh, let me, let me put this out there. 
Let me put this back there and see what, what it does. If I go back to slide 20 again. And, and, and when I was talking about earlier about we've got a limited amount of tax dollars we can spend. And I mean, like I know how you've got the chop of high ability. Our citizens would like to have one of those too. So we gotta worry about trying to save tax dollars for that. <laughs> it's all that stuff we gotta to try to, 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 to put into the pot that we're taking out. That's not what we're trying to get rid of. This, so. But all right, you said the eighty eight thousand gets you a nine hundred seats. That is correct. So plus seventy one. Right. Well, yeah, so how, many, how many seats does 133,000? 133 is, well, 60, I believe. Okay, what if we do, what if you looked at just doing one of those two options? I just got a ballpark price here from staff that we're used spending about $15,000 right now on up. What if for in turn for us, doing one of these options, Saddle Club would take on doing that up to the next 10 years. That's $150,000 that we're getting back that we don't have to spend. And y'all commit to turn around and doing the entire upkeep of the entire facility year round, not just when you use it, but it has to be year round. Is that, <laughs> what, I mean, are you, do what, John? I said, I think they're still going to get paid, the people that work for the city. But there's other things they do. Now it's kind of like if you got a one job and the guy's not paying you, he said, "Well, I don't have to pay. You're still getting paid." That's not true. You're not getting paid for doing. You get paid for the job you're doing. You're still going to spend. Yeah, still going to spend. Well, if you take, if you take on the phase one, look at that phase one we had. If you take that north end arena pad, that's fifteen thousand. That that's where the two hundred four is. So. On our recommendation of, of phase one, right. if you eliminate just that north concrete pad, right. that was $15,000. So 